So the team at Scape have developed another fun little game that you can add to your Genially presentations and it's called Pixel Art. So I'm going to show you what it does. It is based on a table where you can fill in certain boxes. So in this case, this is just my Minecraft template um, where I've used this game. <coughs> um, and in this case, we just need to click wherever it says correct. So if I click these three, then I get a next button. If I take it out and do something else, then I don't get it. Um, obviously, you would change this so you would have three things of the same category. So let's say you have three verbs in those three boxes and then all the wrong ones would be nouns, for example, as an educational activity. Here's another idea, having it as a QR code. So you can actually color in certain boxes and there is a website called Maldin Code, which I'm going to show in a minute where you can uh, create these kind of color in QR codes. And then obviously once it's colored incorrectly, the students can then scan it with a second device. So they would need a computer and their phone, for example, and they can scan it and then uh, it would take them to a website or give them a text, um, which is the clue for the next activity. Or here is another grid. So here the, the question, so to speak, is four. So I have to color in all the boxes that have something to do with four. Um, but I've actually changed it here. So that, let's say these are the correct answers. Then it forms the shape of another number. So that's also a nice little way of giving uh, a clue here that maybe the next number for our secret passcode is a nine. Um, in this case, we also got a validation button. So if I click here, it will give me the feedback that it's correct. So if I put something wrong, then it will show me that I'm wrong here. Okay, so how to do it? It's all based on a table as a set. So you need this template. So you need to download this presentation and reuse it. And we need all these elements. The two purple elements are optional. So we we'll leave them for now. And I take the other ones. So if we put them on an empty page, here we go. So this is our table that's going to show the right answers. You can't change the color of the boxes. So they will always automatically be kind of black, but a bit see through. So you can still see the questions underneath. Okay, but you can change the size of the table and it is um, an actual data table, which you can create from the resources in Genially down here. So it's one of those. So if I click on it and I click this settings button here, then I can go to data and this is where I put in my answers. So if I want to have more columns or more rows, I just need to add more numbers. and. Wherever there's a one, this will be a correct answer. Wherever there's a zero or any other number or letter, it will be a wrong answer. So in this case, let's say I want actually more rows. So I put in some more uh, numbers here and my table will get bigger. So if I do this, here we go, it should add more rows. So now, I've actually got six rows instead of five and so on. And I can change the shape and the, the size of the table just by dragging it around. OK, the reason why sometimes it's good not to put zero, but instead put, for example, an X is because if you've got a whole row of zeros, it will not show in the table because it doesn't recognize that this is actually data. So we would need to put in an X in at least one of them. So the table um, displays this row or this column. OK, so let's say this is correct now. Now I need to group this table with my little um, code uh, box here. So I group this together. And we've got the two reward elements. So we've got the OK and the error button so I can group them with any kind of text that I want. Um, so let's say we just put correct and wrong. And now I group this together. So this will be displayed 
once all the boxes are filled in correctly. And for an escape game, uh, it's a good idea to then add a link to the correct box here, which will take you to the next page. So you can only get to the next page if you've got it all correct, basically. So here it will not actually show the arrow button. It will only show the correct one when all the correct boxes are put in. So now I can choose to put in the validation button as well. So in that case, I need to have these two elements. Um, this one here with the pixel words in it just needs to be in a corner somewhere. And the other one needs to be grouped again. Um, let's just group it with this icon here. And that means as soon as I click this button, it will tell me if I've got it right or wrong. So in this case, it says arrow because I haven't colored anything in here. It would still say, say arrow and so on until I've got it all right. If I don't have those two purple elements in my slide, the correct will just appear as soon as everything is correct. If I do have the purple in there, it won't appear until the validation button is clicked. Okay, so this needs to be in the foreground of whatever you put behind it. So the words or the QR code and so on. So for example, here you can see they've made the table invisible as well. So in this case, they've changed the all the colors and all the borders to invisible and they've turned off the show borders down here. Um, so then it looks a bit nicer when you can't see it. So let's turn them back on. I mean, at the beginning, it's probably best to have them on so you can see easily if they're in the right place or not. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to use the uh, color your QR code page because that page is only available in German. So I'll just quickly give you a run through. And it looks like this. So Malding code, which means color the code. Um, you want to go to the middle button here, QR code created, and you can either take uh, the player to another website. So it could then give them another clue. So for example, it could take them to a video of a, a certain process and they need to name that process. Or you can give them a, a code word. So let's say our code number is this. This is what I want to display once they scan it with a phone. Now we go to co code zum Ausmalen erstellen, which means created. And I get a few more options. So first I can decide how hard I wanted to have it. So either easy, which means um, there are only about three numbers that need to be colored in. So for example, color in all number five, all number three, all number one. Or I can have up to 10 different numbers that need to be colored in. Um, and you can also have it with letters. So A to F and so on. Or you can even put in your own letters and numbers and decide which ones will be the correct ones. Okay, so we go with easy for now because it will take quite a long time to click all the correct boxes. And I can also choose how much of the whole code need to be colored in. So if I do only 20%, it means they only have to color in two rows here. So it will be quite quick. 50% uh, is a bit more and so on. And then I can click here in Malvorlage and it will download the code. Or I can click the uh, solution and it will download the solution. So it saves this as a picture file. Here we go, which I can then insert in my um, in my presentation as an image. The way to use it is, for example, you could have a multiple choice quiz and it tells you if answer number five is correct, then color in all fives in this grid. Or in this case, it's letter. So if answer B is correct, color in all Bs. If answer D is correct, color in all Ds and so on. And only if they color in the correct letters, then they will get the correct QR code. And in this case, if it's 
colored incorrectly, they get this hint here of the phone appearing. So A, they know it's correct and B, they know that they need to use their phone to scan it.